Hey, Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. Woo, it is good to be back with you. Welcome to Monday. You know what that means? It's time for our horoscopes. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who came out to yesterday's videos. I did a little Sunday walk in the sun earlier in the day, and then in the evening we had the live broadcast of the Witching Hour, which is our new Sunday night talk show, our gathering of the Order of the Purple Cord. And if you didn't see those videos yesterday, you got some catching up to do. So definitely check out the videos, the two videos in the queue right before this one. On Saturday, also Saturday night, we had our seance. So if you haven't been around this week and you got a lot to catch up on, I'm so glad you're here. You know, I tell you, it is Monday and I always get in my metaphysical mode because I start studying the star charts and looking at the sky it gets me all excited and today I put on my Monday shirt I always wear this on Monday this is my Aquarius shirt it's got the water bear on it isn't that great and I'm wearing some mystical pendants today I've got on uh, my beautiful silver oops let's see if you can see this my silver pentacle here which I'm crazy about then I'm wearing a beautiful blue sapphire pendant and I love the sapphire. You know, it's called the witch's stone sapphire. I believe it. And uh, we're going to talk about more about the sapphire on Wednesday, on Wick and Wednesday. So make sure to be here on Wick and Wednesday. We're going to cover all about the mystical witch's stone, the sapphire. Okay, so make sure to be here. You guys are always the best. I have the best time here with you. And, you know, today we're going to go through the horoscopes. Now, we've had a lot of new subscribers this last week, and I want to give a big shout out, say thank you to all the new people for joining. And, you know, for a lot of new people, you may not know, we have a kind of a weekly schedule here. And every Monday, part of our schedule is every Monday we do horoscopes. And I give a little snapshot, an overview of each day of the week of the astrological transits, what's going on with the planets and stars. And then I give individual horoscopes for all 12 zodiac signs. That's right, all 12 signs. So if you're watching this video today, just stay here. You will get a reading for yourself, okay? So every single person watching this gets a reading today, okay? And, you know, I always say horoscopes is a great way to get some spiritual help because, you know, some of you are waiting for messages from the spirit world. But in the meantime, horoscopes will give you a little insight to your week. And, uh, you know, for those of you who want to buy a private reading with me, but maybe you can't right now, Horoscopes is another way to kind of get some psychic insights. So definitely, I hope you'll be part of it. Anyways, I am glad you're here. And, you know, we've got our big zodiac wheel here. And we're going to spin around it. Um, some of you have written and said, Bob, what is that wheel that you use? This is actually an old ceramic wheel from the 1960s. And uh, it's actually quite heavy. <laughs> it's solid ceramic. And I don't know if it's actually a bowl or an ashtray or a wall thing. It looks like it has a thing that could be hung in the back for the wall. But anyways, I use it as the wheel because it shows the truth of the zodiac. It's got the sun in the center and all 12 signs around it. And throughout the year, the sun moves through each of the signs. So like, for example, right now we're in the sign of Pisces and Pisces is the fish. So here, let me spin around here. Down here at the bottom, there's our fish. We are in the sun sign of Pisces. So we're going to go through each of the next seven days. By the way, let me just say, because I always forget to say, today's video is for the time period of Monday, March 5th, 2018, through Sunday, March the 11th, 2018. Okay, so this week we're going to look at every day. All right, so join with me. Now, as I said, we've got our sun today in the sign of Pisces. Happy birthday to our Pisces this month. And we've got today our moon in Libra. Now, this is going to be a powerhouse day. Libra opens up communications power. We've got our sun conjunct Neptune. We've got Jupiter trine Mercury, moon in opposition to Uranus, Venus trine Jupiter, and Mars trine Uranus. All of these are power aspects, meaning look within, trust your inner power, and go for it. This is going to be a power day. However, the secret to today's success is be sensitive to those around you. With our moon in opposition to Uranus, it means it's not a good day to try to go off the cuff and make little cute comments or try to be funny. 
people may take it wrong. People will be a little sensitive today because we have because we have Mars trying Uranus. That's some firepower that brings up inspiration, but it can also make people a little oversensitive. So today, you know, it's a power day. It's a great day for business discussions, a great day to break through, but try to be very sensitive to others' feelings today and avoid off the cuff remarks. And you're going to see a successful day here, okay? So definitely roll with it, okay? Now, you know, when we go into Tuesday, our power shifts. It's not so much outer world power on Tuesday as it is going to be inner world power, psychic power. Our moon moves into Scorpio that day, which is a water sign, which brings up deep feeling and emotion, deep intuition. Uh, our sun is conjunct Neptune, highlighting psychic power. And Mercury is conjunct Venus, meaning that you're going to feel good, you're going to be able to connect with people, you're going to be empathic. But it means most of your energy is going to be more inner world rather than outer world. So definitely trust your intuition, pay attention, make notes of what you're perceiving, and that will be the best way to tackle Tuesday. Uh, again, on Wednesday, we have the same energy. It's another psychic power day. Our sun is trying the moon uh, which is still in Scorpio. Again, that's that water energy. And our sun is conjunct Neptune. Again, highlighting inner vision, and water energy, emotional energy. So trust your feelings. Be as sensitive to others. You'll get a sense because people will reveal their hearts on Wednesday. So it's a good day to have heart-to-heart -heart discussions and really listen. Sometimes the outer words may not match what you're feeling inside. Trust your inner feeling, okay? And you're going to find that that day, Wednesday, is another power psychic breakthrough day. Now, as we move into Thursday here, our moon moves over into Sagittarius. Sagittarius is fire energy that brings up a lot of power for that day. Uh, our moon this day is trine Mercury, opening communications power. Our moon is trine Venus, opening feeling good, good relations. And But our moon, uh, Mercury, excuse me, the planet Mercury on Thursday is square Saturn. What all this means is be patient in relationships. There's going to be good energy to open discussions, but you may find because of that Mercury square Saturn that there's a sense of timing being off in communications or people may not always be on the same page with you. Maybe a little confusing in the signals, but the overall energy will be very good. So be very patient, take communication slow, especially in romance on Thursday, and you'll have breakthrough in the coming days, okay? Now, speaking of the coming days, once we go into Friday, which is the 9th of March, um, this is a power day. We've got our sun trying Jupiter. That is a great alignment because anytime Jupiter comes in, that is the powerhouse of the zodiac. Um, and we've also got uh, our moon in Sagittarius, again, fire energy, and our sun is conjunct Neptune. And this means that you're going to be in power discussions. You're going to be feeling your sense of timing. Trust on Friday your sense of timing. Trust your gut. Go for big success because that Jupiter Sun trying connection really brings in winning energy. And remember, it's winning for each person. So if you're in business negotiations, try to be thinking about it in terms of let's make everybody a winner. And it's going to be Friday's probably one of our great greatest days of the week, okay? Now, when we go into Saturday, uh, actually, that's probably equally as strong as Friday. We've again got our moon in Sagittarius. That's that firepower. Our sun, again, is trine Jupiter. Jupiter's the powerhouse of the zodiac. Our moon is conjunct Mars. That's bringing in some feeling, some deep inner passion energy. Our moon is trying Uranus, which is really, again, opening that psychic self, and Mars is trying Uranus, meaning breakthrough. So whatever you begin on Friday, if you get into a delay and you feel like we're almost there, you know, but we're still having delays, don't worry. On Saturday, with that Mars trying Uranus, that's breakthrough energy, and this is really a super power day, and uh, it's a power mission day is what I call it. So Keep on your mission. You'll have success, okay? Uh, now, once we get to Sunday, everybody after this week of intense energy is probably going to need a break. I was looking at the charts. I thought, whew, this is an intense. It's a good week, 
but it's just an intense week. And even good things can be a little overwhelming. Luckily, our moon is moving into Capricorn on Sunday. That's going to ground all that energy down. That's Earth energy of feeling stability, a feeling of success. And it means that those things you've set in motion will come into tangible reality on Sunday. Uh, we've got our moon square Mercury, which means that it's not the best day for communications. Uh, we've got our moon square Venus. You may not feel or look so great that day. And we've got uh, Mercury square Saturn, meaning complexity and getting people on the same page and seeing things clearly. So really Sunday is, you know, I would say absorb that lunar Capricorn energy, make it a rest day, stay at home, Netflix and chill, you know, literally. And you'll have a great day. It's not a good day, really, at least by astrology standards, to try to arrange business meetings or do big social events. I would really caution against that. It's really, as I said, Netflix and chill. So Sunday's your da down day, and just enjoy being at home and watching movies, okay? Well, there you go, guys. There are There is our overview, our kind of psychic snapshot of what's coming. Now, we're going to jump into all 12 zodiac signs here. So we're going to see... What is in the stars for you? Now, if you don't know your zodiac sign, listen up because I'm going to give the birth dates after each sign. And so you'll hear the birth dates. Now, if you're on the cusp and you're saying, well, under one astrologer, I was a Sagittarius. And on another astrology platform, I'm a Capricorn. I don't know who I am. Listen up because I'd say listen to both horoscopes for you cusp babies because really you draw energy from both signs. And sometimes you're going to be more of one sign than the other. But the, the kind of the blessing is you actually get two horoscopes. I know some cusp people come to me and say, it's like, if I don't like being cusp, I don't know what I am. I'm confused. I said, you're a little of both and enjoy it. And that means you get twice the help. Okay. So there you go. So we're going to go through all 12 signs here. <laughs> Excuse me, because I'm losing my voice. Now, <clears throat> we're going to start here with Aries. And Aries is March 21st to April 20th. Aries, there is a lot of firepower this week. You are a fire sign. You are in harmony with it. Uh, Aries are going to find that in the work area, they just walk on through. It's like I'm just cruising along and I'm breaking through. In relationships, same thing. You are breaking through. Aries will find that they're winning on all fronts. This is going to be kind of a, a fun week for Aries because they're going to find that they don't get a lot of challenge. They get a lot of support and everything turns their way. So you know what? How often do you get that, right? Well, take it and enjoy it. Uh, also, the highlight for Aries this week are uh, <laughs> this is gonna sound funny, issues connected to gambling. Now, I'm not encouraged to be able to gamble, but it might be a good week for you to maybe go to your local casino and drop a quarter in the slot machine or buy a lottery ticket. You know, but don't go overboard. Just a little bit goes a long way. Uh, your keyword this week, Aries, is win. All right. You're winning. Our next sign, Taurus, April 21st through May 20th. Uh, you know, Taurus, this week you are in psychic mode. You are, you know, an earth sign. You're usually more pragmatic. But this week you are up in the ethers because of all of that Neptune influence around the chart. And you know what? That's okay. Um, allow yourself to drift into your dreamer place. Allow yourself to have a vision. Tauruses are going to find in the work area that if they break the normal pattern and kind of withdraw and meditate and contemplate, they're going to have really sudden break. There's a lot of insights on how to change things in the work area. Same thing also, Taurus, in relationships. You want to just kind of dream of how things could be. If you're in a place right now and you're a Taurus where you're having challenges in relationships, don't panic. Visualize the outcomes that you want in healing relationships, friendship, romances. And as you dream it, so you create it. So Tauruses are very much in their psychic self, their dream mode, their dream creator mode. Let that be the reigning energy this week. Also highlighted for Tarsus are issues connected to art, uh, particularly art creation. So you might want to use some of your dream energy to create a new artwork, a painting or a sculpture. And if you've never done art, now's a great time to start. Your keyword this week, Taurus, is intuitive. Use the intuitive power. Okay. Our next sign is Gemini, May 21st to June 20th. 
you know Gemini's. You are really on top of it this week. You're eagle-eyed. And this is a good thing to remember. Keep your focus. There's going to be a lot of energy, a lot of social energy, and a lot of shifts going on for Gemini's this week. And the secret to getting through this week in the best way is to keep your eye focused on your goal. It will be very easy this week for Gemini's to get distracted by other people, to get pulled in other directions. Just stay on your path. Tell other people, thank you, I'll get back to you, I'll help you, but don't let anybody take you off your focus right now. Okay? In relationships, Gemini, you want to really spend some time also evaluating where you are in your relationships. This is a good time for Gemini's to kind of build some bridges, to make some peace, or to move forward a relationship uh, in a direction that you want it to go. Okay, a lot of, lot of energy for communications and love. Uh, also highlight for Gemini's are issues connected to travel. So you might want to do some deep soul journeying and travel somewhere to refresh your mind and spirit. Your key word this week, Gemini, is focus. Just keep that focus. You're going to be awesome. All right. Our next sign is Cancer, and that's June 21st to July 22nd. Cancers, I tell you, you are one of the signs. Oops, I'm knocking everything over here. You are one of the signs that is really feeling that Neptune energy this week. This is going to be a week uh, for Cancers where it's like you are so psychic, you even shock yourself. Might get a little spooky, but don't worry about just enjoy that power. Uh, you know, Cancers actually are one of the signs that uh, a lot of psychics fall under Cancer, interestingly. And that doesn't surprise me, but this week you're definitely, if you're a Cancer and you're saying, well, Bob, I don't have a psychic bone in my body, this week you will. So embrace it, enjoy it, and learn from it. Um, they show around you also very strong connection with the spirit world this week. And so you're going to have guidance in work and guidance in love. And you're literally going to feel a voice guiding you. Don't be afraid of it. Just say, thank you, spirit world, and take, it, take its advice and move forward. Uh, but you're really going to be in touch with your inner world, your outer world, and the inner and outer worlds of people around you, okay? Also highlighted for Cancers this week are issues connected to creative writing. So a good time to open that channel and write a book. Your key word this week, Cancer, is channel. Channel power. Okay. Our next sign is Leo, July 23rd to August 22nd. Leos, you have a lot of energy this week like the Aries. It's like you just keep winning. No matter what you do, it turns to success. This is going to be a high-powered week, going to be a lot of activity. In the work area, just roll with it. Uh, but the secret is don't just set things in motion and walk away. You need to kind of follow the progress all the way through, kind of follow through to the end, and you'll see success here. In the area of relationships, Leo, this week, this may be a little challenging week because there's going to be so much business energy that's got your focus. Your partner might feel a little neglected. Try to take some time this week to explain to them what is going on in your life and really keep that communication open because the energy around Leo is so high-powered, it's, it's almost like romance could get put aside for right now. It's not the best week to start relationships because your focus isn't going to be there. So if you're single, probably not going to happen this week for you to connect. If you're in a relationship, please be careful to take some time to talk to your partner so you don't create an estrangement. Other than that, this is going to be a powerful week. Also highlighted for Leos this week are issues connected to long-term investments. So a good time to explore you know, property investment. You might just score a great deal on a home or some land. Uh, your key word this week, Leo, is follow through. Okay, just follow through and you'll get there. All right. Our next sign is Virgo, August 23rd to September 22nd. Virgos, you're usually very practical down to earth people. But interestingly, Virgos do have a strong mystical side, but it often doesn't show to the people around them. This week, Virgo, you are in psychic mood. You're a very much similar in energy to the Cancers this week. And you're going to be in tune with the mystic. Uh, you may even feel a little etheric, like you're out in the clouds and like, am I grounded? Am I focused? Don't 
really worry about it. It's kind of like you're in a position where everybody around you is a little scattered and unfocused. And so if you're in your etheric world, it's not going to matter because they're not going to notice or think you're strange. So particularly in work, give in to your inspirations, give in to your intuition. That's how you're going to have breakthroughs in work. You may have a, a zany idea that sounds so off the wall, people think you're insane. But if you present it this week, it will be taken and really looked at and open doors for you. So definitely go outside your comfort zone with your ideas, okay? Uh, in the area of relationships also, Virgo, you're going to feel a strange sort of mystical connection to people around you. It's a very strong week where Virgos may draw a new partner into their life for those of you that are single, where you may literally feel like you're having some past life memory of a person. And interestingly, they'll have that same sense as well. So just be open to that, allow it to happen. For those of you Virgos that are in marriages or stable relationships, um, you know, explore your intuitive connection with your partner. Work on mind-to-mind -mind communication and explore past lives. You'll find a lot of wealth there. Also highlighted for Virgos this week, or issues connected to transportation. So if you've been thinking about getting a new car, let your spirit guides lead you to one, okay? Your key word this week, Virgo, is <gasps> mystical. All right. Our next sign is Libra, September 23rd to October 22nd. You know, Libras, you are sharing a lot of energy, interestingly, with the Aries this week. You are in major production mode, major growth mode, major winning mode. Uh, for Libras that are, you know, looking for work, this is a very good week for interviews. You'll show well, you'll impress people. For those of you who are Libras who are already working, this is a great week to focus on promotions. And for those of you Libras that are, you know, either starting a business or own your own business, a great week to really put in plans to kind of expand your product line, expand your, your work that you're doing. Let yourselves be seen. This is a great week for Libras to focus on marketing and building up image. And this, all this energy invested in that will pay off in the coming weeks with increased business opportunities activity for you. Okay. In the area of relationships this week, Libra, might be a little challenging. You may not be feeling in the mood to connect with others. Even though we have a lot of strong Venusian elements, you're more focused on the air energy rather than that earthy and watery energy. And so this is probably going to be more of a solitary week. Don't let that upset you. Just understand that as like if you can put your focus where the power is, then you're going to be successful. Um, also highlighted for Libras this week uh, are issues connected to uh, IT development. So if you're a Libra and you've been wanting to explore, you know, getting a new computer or maybe building your own computer, your own kind of network, uh, doing something in the, you know, information technology area to help yourself or a business, great week for that. Um, your key word this week, Libra, is growth. All right. Our next sign, Scorpio, October 23rd to November 21st. Scorpios, you know, you are in a strong power position this week because you are starting to see the connections between what you're feeling and what's actually occurring in the world. And so Scorpios want to draw back from all that hectic energy. It's going to be a little dramatic around Scorpios this week and do some inner reflection. Think about yourself. How have you connected or are you connecting to others around you? How can you be more of a servant and a great leader of light to them? Scorpios will find the area of relationships this week. That this is also a very good week to kind of get things clear with people in their life. You're going to start to realize, you know, Scorpio, that each person in relationship, whether it's romantic or even family, has contributed something to good or to bad. And this is a good time to you to kind of understand your role and, and open up those communication doors. Also highlight for Scorpios this week are energies connected to uh, business development. So Scorpio, you may be feeling inspired and want to start and kind of go on a new path career-wise. Excellent time for that, particularly for Scorpios who want to start their own businesses. Your key word this week, Scorpio, is reflect.
All right. Our next sign, Sagittarius, November 22nd to December 21st. Sagittarius, I got to tell you, you are just full of firepower. That firepower, which is very predominant this week, is in your court, a lot of Martian energy, and it's really taking you to places of success. Sagittarians are going to feel this week, particularly in the work area, that they're just racing through their week. You probably will. Remember to slow down so that you don't confuse people because your struggle this week, Sagittarius, is going to be remembering that there are times when teamwork is necessary. And even though Sagittarius have the power to go it alone and and rock it. Uh, don't leave people behind this week. That's going to be your challenge. But that being said, whatever you focus on this week, it really shows success around it, particularly in the work area. In the relationship area also, you are drawing people to you. Sagittarius have that glamour power, that star power. So there's going to be a lot of romance around you this week. If you're a single Sagittarius, get ready because it looks like date time is coming for you. And for those of you in relationships, it's like that relationship just comes back to life. It's like when you first met, you know, that feeling. Well, that's Sagittarius's lucky energy this week. Um, also highlighted for Sagittarius this week, or it's just connected to education and further education and development. So a good time for you to think about going back to school or taking some classes to further your skills for future career growth. Uh, your key word this week, Sagittarius, is win. Yay. You know, I just realized Aries and you have the same word. Well, I have to give you a different word because I already gave them win. Well, we can be win. What if we change it slightly to um, succeed? Succeed. Okay, that's going to be your word. Because I try to give each sign their own unique word. Okay, so you're winning and you're succeeding. Succeed will be your word or success. <laughs> All right. Our next sign is Capricorn, December 22nd to January 19th. You know, Capricorns, this week for you, it's kind of like you're going 100 miles an hour. Um, don't burn yourself out, okay? You want to realize that each day you need to build in for yourself some of that quiet time and reflective time and rest time. Capricorns will find that they're very much in leadership role this week, and people are drawing from your inspiration. Uh, you're going to be in teacher mode this week in work. You're going to be in leadership, boss role. And even if you're a low-level Capricorn in a company this week, be expected to be trusted with some major responsibility and kind of upped in the ranks of your respect and your position. So it's a good week for Capricorns for you know showing off your leadership skills and working on career advancement. In the area of relationships, Capricorn, also, uh, you know, you want to kind of think about uh, romance in the terms of taking things slow. Your outer world's going to be a little hectic. Let your home life be more docile, okay? That will give you a balance so you don't burn out, okay? Uh, also focused here uh, for Capricorns this week are issues connected to spiritual development. So it might be a good time if you can as part of your week, build in a little spiritual retreat or maybe just go to a special little spiritual gathering like a meditation circle or a church service, something like that, okay? Uh, your key word this week, Capricorn, is recharge. Just recharge that energy. Be aware of that. All right, our next sign, Aquarius, January 20th to February 18th. You know, Aquarius, you are in major psychic mode. The spirit world is pulling you up into the etheric realm. And you may even feel a little ungrounded this week. Don't worry about it. Sometimes you just have to be in those air currents. You know, if you were to call an Aquarius an airhead, and I'm an Aquarius, so I can say this. If you called us an Aries and you're an airhead, probably the truth is this week that would be right. But that's a good thing because an airhead means you're up in the ethers, you see all things, and you're aware of all the energies in play. So while people on earth may not get you this week, know that you're in a position of power because you can see and know all things around you. And people will seek you out for guidance and advice because those who have a little bit of wisdom will already tune in and say, oh, that Aquarius is in the know. So in your work area, be open to be sought, being sought out as a counsel to people in power, okay? Now, in the area of relationships, I have to tell you, of course, this is going to be a challenging week because you're going to be so etheric 
that your partners are going to feel like they're just not connecting or relating to you. So be very careful that you don't alienate people. It would be very easy for Aquarius to be so up in here, up in the sky, that they just ignore people on Earth. Please be careful not to do that. If you can kind of come back to Earth at least for an hour or two a day to talk to your friends and family, you'll be better off, okay? Also highlighted for Aquarius this week are issues connected to occult studies. So it's a good time while you're in the ethers to explore spirit, communication, magic, witchcraft, all these mysteries, okay? Your key word this week, Aquarius, is etheric. Etheric. Oh, I love that word. All right. Our next sign is Pisces, February 18th to March 20th. Pisces, I got to tell you, I've got to warn you straight up. You're going to have a lot of energy like the Aquarians going to be so much spirit communication you're going to wonder if you're in this world or the next luckily for you Pisces as we get closer to midweek you start to be more grounded in the here and now actually more grounded than the Aquarius so that's a good thing for you guys so this week you want to listen to that inner voice trust your spirit guides if you're somebody who says well I don't have spirit guides I don't know what that is well, guess what? This week, ask for a spirit guide and you'll get one because you're definitely attuning to the higher vibrations this week. In the area of relationships also, Pisces, this is a real week for you of what I call soul-to-soul -soul connection. Uh, this is a good week to explore the concept of past life connections with those around you. And what you'll find out is that, you know, you may have a sense like you've known somebody before and when you share that with them, they'll be like, oh, Oh my God, I totally get that. I feel the same way. And see, you've built a bridge and a bond. So this week for you, Pisces, you know, you really want to be open to that spiritual connection with those around you. Also highlighted for Pisces this week are issues connected to music and music development. So if you've ever been a Pisces, you want to learn to play an instrument, or maybe you have used to be in a band, you know, it's time to explore your musical talent. Maybe go take a lesson, learn to play the flute or the violin or something. Have some fun with music, okay? Your key word this week, Pisces, is psychic. All right. Oh my gosh, guys, can you believe that? We just we just spun around our big zodiac wheel. Listen, I have to say it. I say it all the time, but it's true. If you're in a time of challenge in your life, don't give in to despair. Just pause and look to the stars. The zodiac above us is always in motion. And what that means is that each day brings us new alignments of power to help us on our journey and on our way. The stars don't compel us or control us, but they are allies and friends to inspire us on our journey. So let your heart and feet be in the earth. Let your spirit be in the stars and you'll have great joy. Keep faith, hope, and love in your heart, and you're going to be just fine. I am so glad you guys are here. Listen, thanks for being part of Spiritual. I love you guys. By the way, I have to say, you know, some of you wrote and said, Bob, do you have books? How do we get them? Yeah, I have a lot of books in print. These are books that I've written. Uh, this is Messages from Rose. This one's Ouija Mysteries about working with the Ouija board. Psyche Bob's Book of Wicked Wisdom about my journey as a witch. All of these are available over at my website, and I'll have the link to my website in the info box below, robert-heckman.com, and you can pick those up over there. Buy one, buy one for a friend. You know, spring break and summer's coming. You want to kind of get your summer reading in. Get it now while you can, okay? And uh, for those of you who are asking also, I am available this upcoming week. I do have a few spots left for private readings. We're filling up pretty quickly, but we'll get some of you in still. So please contact me. You can call my office, 571-483-2112, and we'll get you on the, the schedule. Or write to me at my email. The link is below, readings at robert-heckman.com. Again, link is below, and we'll get you on. Now, for those of you who are saying, well, what about your readings? What's that about? Private reading is you and me, one-on-one -on -one for an hour. And we can do that by telephone, by Skype, or in person. And we can explore your whole soul journey, your past, your present, your future. We'll find out who your spirit guides are, what messages they have. We'll look at messages that come over from those of friends and deceased loved ones. We'll bring help from them from the spirit world. And we'll explore your soul contracts and your life missions. 
all of that and I answer all of your questions. So if you haven't had a private reading with me, you might want to think about that as well. Again, the contact info for me below will be below in the information box. You guys are best. I love you. Sending blessings to all of you. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. What's tomorrow? Oh, Tuesday, we got messages from the spirit world. So make sure to be here for that. And I'll answer your psychic questions. We'll see you then. Until then, may you always blessed be.